Hello and welcome Grand Rapids. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm your anchor, Josie Sabo. And I'm your other anchor, Sean Francis. And because you're not sure whether it's still middle of winter or first spring, second spring, who the frick knows, we are bringing you the local, national, and world news that you may have missed. Welcome Grand Rapids. This is News Flash. In perfect sync. Uh, our top story tonight, I don't know you guys, so far these early previews of the new Fiddler on the Roof seem not so good. Uh, yes, a timeless classic, political tensions between Russia and Ukraine creating a humanitarian refugee crisis, but in this revival, nobody in their right minds are on the roof right now. Uh, so right now, the, most of the world is mad at Putin, except for his favorite pinup boys, of course. Right. Trump called this invasion genius because he's so used to wrestling, he doesn't get that you shouldn't openly admire and root for the heel in real life. No. And Tucker Carlson, seen here, uh, where even he is trying to understand why he is still allowed on television, tried to justify the invasion by listing all the things that Putin hasn't done to Americans personally. Has Putin ever called me a racist? Has he threatened to get me fired for disagreeing with him? Has Putin shot your dog with a chocolate bullet? Has Putin chucked you out of a moving helicopter? Has Putin slept with your wife, sister, mother, and high school teacher in one night of an unbelievable passion just to humiliate you? Has Putin committed war crimes against his own people and thousands of other innocent people while undermining our democracy by infiltrating our social media? Oh, wait, don't answer that last one. I know, guys, we were all late, you know, all of us, we're all responsible uh, for uh, not getting involved in World War II uh, right away, but I don't think anyone was like, you know what, Hitler's pretty, he's pretty smart, that Hitler guy. Look at him riding that horse. So. Uh, Ukraine was once a country with the third most nuclear weapons in the world, but after the collapse of the Soviet Union in the 1990s, they de-armed, which was really chill of them. Very chill. Yeah. So chill that in the arms reduction negotiation, negotiations, the West said we would stand by Ukraine in the event of a Russian invasion. Well, it's happened. Uh, and the West is standing by, I guess, just like uh, when Russia took over Crimean Peninsula in 2016. Except, you know, standing is pretty hard work. Uh, so many thoughts and prayers, uh, some economic sanctions. So I guess uh, most of us... Uh, are gonna just sit down instead. Uh, but we got your back, Ukraine. Yeah, we, we changed our Facebook profiles and everything. You go, girl. Uh, US even offered uh, the UK president, uh, and lest we forget, who was a former comedian, uh, uh, Vladimir Zelensky, an uh, airlift out of the country, but he refused, saying that he wants ammunition, not a ride, which is Pretty badass, if you ask me. Uh, it's also saying something because most comedians will tell you when they are dying on stage, they want to get out of there as soon as possible. <laughs> that goes to show you the difference between a Ukrainian president and an American president. A former comedian who goes out into the streets to face the Russian army versus a former reality star who will go into a bunker when he gets too many mean tweets. And while both of them have some pretty hilarious vintage clips on YouTube, only one of them is intentionally hilarious. Yeah, and sure, it's a bit of a relief that our current president spent a year trying to rebuild relationships in Europe so that we can try to unite against a common threat, but we still have to be concerned about that threat. <laughs> Don't forget about that part. And also a rapidly escalating nuclear threat. Because now that the world is focused on Ukraine, North Korea launched a ballistics missile into the sea on Sunday. And Putin put uh, nuclear missiles on alert for Russia as well. Uh, and we had confirmation that the infamous Ukrainian nuclear site Chernobyl has been overtaken by the Russian army. So I guess if you are a Broadway fan, look forward to the upcoming real life version of Dr. Strangelove, a musical. In a completely inappropriate change of tone, the Michigan Winter Beer Festival. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beer! Yeah, we know that. Uh, it was held at Lake Michigan Credit Union Ballpark in Grand Rapids on Saturday after a year hiatus due to COVID, which is really a plus because all the beer that were, they're going to serve last year has got a little extra time in the barrel. Uh, unfortunately, for most of the 6,000 craft beer enthusiasts who attended, their tolerance is so all over the place, you know, drinking at home instead of the bar. So there was a lot of unusual behavior from 
food necklaces, to ice mugs, to costumes, cornhole and music from a band called Slumlord Radio. Oh, oh, wait, I think that's just normal beer festival behavior, right? Yeah. Oh, beer city, you sloppy, messy bitch. <laughs> Marijuana prices are plummeting in Michigan. Yeah! <laughs> also, we're the fourth largest state for cannabis sales in the country. Yeah! We're number four! <laughs> It's simple economics, everybody. Supply and demand. People aren't driving as much because the gas prices are so high, so everyone's just spending more time at home sitting and pondering the big questions in life. What is my purpose? How can I solve the problems of the world? What would happen if you put a giant hot pocket and filled it with smaller hot pockets? <laughs> Uh, speaking of marijuana, legendary boxer Mike Tyson's cannabis line, Tyson 2.0, will be launching across Michigan this year. Tokers in Detroit, Flint, Battle Creek, and Hazel Park will be the first in the nation to experience Tyson's favorite specialty strains, Knockout OG, Pound for Pound Cake, uh, those ones are real, but we're looking forward to expand his other lines, uh, Ear Munch Kush, Melt Your Face Tattoo Hash, and remember when Mike Tyson was convicted, convicted of sexual assault and sentenced to six years in prison chronic? All strains will pair excellently with episodes of Mike Tyson Mysteries, which might actually feel like a documentary when compared with the actual things Mike Tyson has done. He's owned several tigers, everybody. Last week, an 80-year-old Illinois woman was being held hostage by an intruder was saved in part because she hadn't texted her daily Wordle score to one of her daughters. This is true. Uh, it was a little awkward, though, because this week her daughter called the police again, but her mom just didn't get the puzzle right and was too embarrassed to share it. <laughs> Ever since the New York Times took over, it's so hard. <laughs> Meanwhile, parents everywhere just perked up as they may have found a cheat code to get children to text them back. Oh, don't die me, I'm just being held hostage. I guess I won't be able to brag about my second guess when. In California, a lost dog was reunited with his original family that he went missing from 12 years ago. The dog was found in a city only 18 miles away from his family. Oh wow, 12 years apart. I feel like they have like a lot to catch up on in. Oh, wait, I'm getting a report. The dog is now dead. Well, better luck next time, Buster. Sorry. Uh, dogs, y'all. Uh, Paramount and Disney uh, announced new properties based on your favorite childhood favorites earlier this month, but is that really enough to appease uh, audiences and appeal to them? Our lab rats, Bill and Drew in the tech booth, uh, created a childhood bot that should accurately predict reactions uh, through analyzing everyone's inner child. Uh, nostalgia Bot, uh, come on out. Here's Nostalgia Bot, everybody. Wow, so lifelike. Wow, that's incredible. You really figured out. Yeah, really, it spared no expense, Bill. Uh, where, where did you get the money for, for this? All right, I'll say no more. I don't need any more. Um, so first, uh, the new Rescue Rangers movie uh, on Disney Plus uh, coming out this year, featuring Andy Samberg, John Mulaney as Chip and Dale, and directed by the Lonely Island's Akiva Schaefer. What do you think, Nostalgia Bot? I think that's good. Yeah, that seems like a good reaction. Okay. Next, we've got Paramount Pictures will produce not only a fourth SpongeBob movie, but also three character-driven feature feature-length spin-offs exclusive to Paramount Plus. And I've got to say, I'm not sure if this is a good idea. A childhood bot? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess they, I think that's positive too. Uh, Who knows? All right, uh, Paramount also announced a new CGI animated Dora series, uh, which will also be accompanied by a li live action show in the vein of the recent theatrical film, Dora and the Lost City of Gold. Seriously? Oh boy. What do you think? Who, 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 who? Good job. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah, I think something's wrong. Childhood butt locks everything, but like everyone has different opinions. Yeah, Bill, like, uh, I think you messed up somewhere. My bad, hold on one sec. There's like uh, the toddler switch on here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get 
Okay, uh, you can reboot them all the way from the tech booth. That's weird. Uh, all right, so for Paramount Plus, uh, three villain-focused Ninja Turtles films, a multiple Smurfs movies, and a new Transformer cartoon. Yikes. Uh, childhood bot? No, no, no. They're ruining my childhood. Burn it all down. Oh, no. <laughs> Bill, no, no, Bill, stop it. Bad. I don't want to die for the next Smurfs movie. Yeah, I heard it's a musical. Uh, and wait a second, I've got it, I've got it. Uh, hey, Childhood Bot. Yes. Um, Paramount also announced a Blue's Clues movie that will star Steve, Joe, and the new host, Josh. Isn't that nice? All of your favorites in one place. We just got a lift or blue skin to mail time. I think we all learned. Still can't tell if that's positive. <laughs> no, I think that's good. Yeah. But I think we all learned an important lesson about nostalgia and toxic fandoms today. Right? I think that we should take Bill's Bitcoin away. Yeah. <laughs> and lock him so he doesn't make any more dangerous robots. Nostalgia bot, everybody. Yeah. Back to important news. <laughs> Yeah, the most important news, because according to the Federal Reserve, an inflation gauge that is closely monitored by the branches hit 6.1%. This is the highest jump since the 80s. And along with the 80s level inflation, these other items from the 80s are also making a comeback, such as fanny packs, Ghostbusters, more cartoon reboots than Nostalgia Bot can handle. Uh, Rick Astley and the Smiths combined. <laughs> Super cheap weed, uh, hammer pants, uh, what else we got? Uh, we've also got Max Headroom, oh. <laughs> constantly anticipating nuclear war, mm -hmm. and unnecessary modifications to soda. Oh, speaking of which, uh, in beverage news, Pepsi has announced a new drink called Nitro Pepsi. Uh, this new line of beverages that Pepsi claims will have a, quote, smooth and creamy consistency. <laughs> which is supposedly a nod to, I guess, nitro beers and coffees, but it makes me think of something else that happens when you have too much head. <laughs> it's a thinker, yeah. Uh, but now when you go out to eat and you order a Coke and they don't have it, your server is gonna say, is smooth and creamy nitro Pepsi okay? And the answer will be dry heaving every time. <laughs> This past weekend, a semi-truck driver carrying a trailer full of mail plunged into an icy river in Massachusetts and was safely quickly rescued without injury. Now, I know we're all frustrated with delayed shipment times, but we don't need to stick it to the Postmaster General by recreating the saddest modern Boston Tea Party ever. You can just mail him a complaint instead, and I know the post office staff will comp the overnight shipping. Yeah, come on, guys. Pawn Star star Rick Harrison is being sued by his mother over a dispute in ownership of the business started by his father, her late husband. Uh, when asked for comment, Harrison said, best I can do is half a million sentiment out of court, Mom. <laughs> you know, if times get really tough, though, money-wise, there's always a better payday in hardcore pawn. <laughs> Which is specifically ceramic kitten figurines. <laughs> Researchers at the University of Oxford's Big Data Institute, and yes, that's really what they name themselves. Big Data. Yeah, Big Data. <laughs> they linked together the largest known family tree spanning 27 million people. Whoa. Yeah. Might have to put in the leaf on the dining room table for this year's Thanksgiving. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> now, Thank you. you're welcome. News flash.